Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Pet, and welcome to Sicily, and welcome to the Maserati MC20 Cello. What a thing! What a thing of beauty. Strap yourself in, guys, there's plenty to talk about when it comes to this car. I tell you now, already. It's bloody sensational. Welcome to Sicily and welcome to the Maserati MC20 Cello. What a beautiful car, but it's a complete accident that the colour of the car and the colour of the seats pretty much reflect the colour of the lake behind me. But let's just talk about this new offering from Maserati. It is a beautiful car, no doubt. But for me, there's a really interesting story, and that is that there are actually three cars in one here, really. Maserati decided from the ground up to design a platform that could do three things. The first thing we saw from them was earlier this year, the MC20 Coupe. A beautiful car. If you watch the channel, you may well have seen that I went up the hill at the Goodwood Festival of Speed in the MC20 Coupe. In the back, a three litre turbocharged petrol engine producing basically ridiculous numbers. This car will do 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds. But that was just iteration number one. The second iteration of these three cars in one is this, the Cello. It is a Spider. Although in Maserati language, it is a cello. In Italian, cello means sky. And what a beautiful day today to kind of uh, link the two things together. This car is all about taking the roof down, enjoying your environment. So what's basically happened is we've chopped the roof off. Now, normally when you do that in any kind of car, you affect the torsional rigidity and it does horrible things to the handling. This car has a carbon fiber subframe. It's torsionally very stiff anyway. And normally the coupe would have a carbon fiber roof, but what's happened now is we've removed the carbon fiber roof and replaced it with a combination of aluminium and glass electric folding roof. It's actually stowed away behind this um, deck here. The roof will raise and lower in about 11 seconds at speeds of up to 50 kilometers an hour. But the amazing thing is, although it does affect the torsional stiffness a little bit, talking to the design engineers here at Maserati, the numbers are slightly lower, but a normal driver wouldn't recognize that characteristic on the road. And the weight penalty you pay is only an extra 65 kilos for having the ability to drop the roof. And for me, you've got now two cars in one. You can drive it as a coupe, but then this little glass window here, even with the roof up, can lower and you get the the noise from the back of the car, but you're surrounded in this cocoon of luxury, or on a day like today, drop the roof, and hey presto, you have a beautiful spider. But this car from the ground up was designed to be three things, a coupe, a spider, and a full battery electric vehicle. So in the near future, there will be a fully electric version of this MC20. And I find that really interesting because when you look at the underpinnings of the car, pretty much almost like from that line down, all three cars are very, very similar. The architecture underneath based on a carbon fiber subframe, but it has all of the anchoring points and all of the connectivity points for not only the V6 petrol engine that is in the back of the coupe and the spider, but also looking forward, the electric motors and battery pack for the full, full BEV version. And then when you go, if you like, above its waistline, that's when the different body styles and different aesthetics take shape. But a very, very interesting car. The spec of this particular car, there isn't a lightweight version of the Jello, but what the team have done when they've spec this is chosen all of the lightweight options. It's got the lightweight sports seats, which I just think look absolutely beautiful. The car's predominantly carbon fiber anyway, but there's a lot of exposed carbon fiber along the side skirts. There's a little lip spoiler at the back, the rear diffuser, the front splitter are all exposed carbon fiber. Even things like inside the stereo choice of this, they've chosen the base stereo because that has less speakers than the premium stereo and therefore it weighs a little bit less. The only lightweight option that isn't on this car, it has the carbon ceramic brakes for extra stopping power, lower um, uh, unsprung mass, but there is a carbon fiber wheel option. This car doesn't have it. And I have to say, having driven this car all day, I'm so pleased 
the wheel option i believe it's somewhere in the region of about twenty thousand euros extra and therefore you know one dink of a wheel and you're probably looking at a horrible bill of i don't know five eight thousand pounds i'm not so sure i'd want that but look at it it's a beautiful beautiful thing interior wise very similar to uh, the coupe. The big difference actually, um, if you open these doors, they do come out quite a bit. So you need a bit of parking space on the right hand side of the car or the left hand side for the left door, but it's a beautiful interior. Two main touchscreen displays. The big difference is the drive selector knob in the, in the middle has changed from the coupe, although I believe the coupe will be getting that. Gone is the aluminium and, and machined finish. Now is a little screen on top that tells you which driving mode you're in. It's much easier while you're driving to see that. Bought a beautiful, beautiful car. But I'm in Sicily, the weather is beautiful. I'm gonna have to just take this car, find some beautiful Sicilian roads and enjoy myself. <laughs> now, the last thing to mention when you get in is if I were to get into something like a, an Audi R8 Spider or a Huracan Spider, as soon as you put the roof mechanism in, you lose so much um, leg room and, and I'm actually sat in here dare I say it almost needing to pull the seat forward a little bit but beautiful Italian roads beckon people right, let's go and find some let's hunt some roads and have a bit of fun the MC20 Cello is powered by the same 3 litre V6 twin turbo as the coupe Headline figures are 630 PS, that's 261 bhp, and 730 newton meters, or 538 pounds-feet of torque. The transmission is an eight-speed dual-clutch auto with paddle shift, and drive goes through the rear wheels. As I've already mentioned, zero to 62 is dispatched in 2.9 seconds, and the Cello has a top speed of 202 miles an hour. Prices start from around £230,000 plus options. Now I'm a big soft top fan and I'm in Sicily and the weather today is beautiful and this car is called the Cello and in Italy Cello means sky and there's lots of it today, it's bright blue and I can see it right up there. Beautiful. So's this road. So let's start in GT mode. Oh, there's four drive modes in the car. Wet, GT, Sport and Corsa. GT is your default mode. I've also gone into the manual gear change. But the other thing in GT mode is the dampers. I've got two settings for the dampers. I'm in the softer damper setting. So this is the, this is your miles blaster mode. You could sit in this car for a long time, do lots and lots of miles and not be crashed about and have your filling shaken out. Pretty tight round here in places. It's a fairly wide car. Boy, has it got some poke. GT, the, the throttle mapping's a little bit backed off just to give it a more relaxed driving feel. The gear changes are a little bit more relaxed. They're, they're a bit more chilled. Ah, fa bene. And every now and again, you'll get this amazing intake noise and a chirp from the a chirp from the turbo and that for me when you take the roof off of a car you get that extra theatre that extra drama and here in Sicily you've also got the the smells you can smell the olive groves and the wildlife it's just a stunning stunning thing <laughs> yeah so GT mode very chilled there's quite a lot of tridents on this car though. Let's start here. There's one on the main badge and there's a huge one on the radiator grille covered in dead bugs because I've been driving this car quite hard today. One here and one there. They're nice. 
there's a huge one on this rear deck. Only visible if you're being followed by a helicopter or a drone or when you close your soft top because this whole deck lifts up and everybody can see how big your trident is. And finally, the ones you might have to look closest for. The obvious ones are on the centre cap of each wheel, but the actual alloy wheel design has tridents in it too. There's one there, one there and one there. And I think that is just cool. I think it's getting a bit more twisty. So I think, I think I'm gonna step it up a mode and go into sport mode. Again, I'm just gonna twist the selector to the right hand side. The instrument view in front of me changes now two main things have happened here. Now I've got a sharper throttle mapping. I've got much more wastegate chirps and noises from that V6 behind me. But I've also, the suspension's firmed up. Now I have to say, actually this bit of tarmac compared with some of the roads I've been on in Sicily is really smooth and the suspension setting that comes with the default in sport mode isn't actually that bad but if I wanted to soften it up a little bit I could just swipe to the right on that display and put it into the softer damper setting things I'm not going to do today is a launch but this car in launch control will do naught to 100 kilometers an hour not to 62 miles an hour in 2.9 seconds and I have every reason to believe that that's the case these carbon ceramics now they're a little bit warmer there they've got a nice feel they're a tiny bit dead when you first get in the car but, oh wow, you have to be on your A-game here. Yeah. <laughs> now in sport mode, you've still got lots of lovely things helping you out. You've still got um, the stability systems on and you've got full access to that power and torque. I mean, seriously. steering feel is just delicious. I've not been driving the car that long, there's some slow down markings here, not been driving the car that long but it's already giving me a great deal of confidence. Just when you when you come out of a corner and you get on the gas, it's got some grunt this car. The gear change in sport now is much more aggressive. It's a real bang. In GT mode it was laid up, it was backed off a little bit, much more relaxed. This is definitely much more of a kind of sport oriented mode. So this is a more straight bit of road. I'm actually going to take a brave pill and go up into course so you have to hold that um, dial quite a long time. I've now got the ESC back right off and that means I've got access to the full 730 newton meters of torque. I've got a very funky display in front of me now with the rev counter going across the top and a big highlighted number to, to indicate which gear I'm in. The suspension's firmed up even more now. And this is coarser, it's meant for track use only really. But I have to say, I, I expected it to be horrendous. This tarmac's actually quite a nice piece of tarmac. This probably isn't a mode that most users would be in. Oh yeah, you see the gear changes are 
really quick, really punchy. And it's just you and the car. There's nothing really helping you out here. So dry conditions, nice warm tires, all of those things, nice straight bit of road. That for me and my level of driving talent, that's Corsa. <laughs> but yes, quite impressive. But I think when we go back into the more hilly mountainy stuff, I think I go back into sport, soften the dampers up a little bit. That's definitely petrol ped mode. That's where I'm happy. But oh, oh this thing. It's naughty. See once you're on a bit of road like this, this is where this car shows its true colours. I mean seriously. That higher speed. There's a lot of aero on this car. It produces around about 100 kilos of downforce at 200 kilometers an hour, which considering it's got no real kind of trick bits of aero stuck on it, no big wings or anything. But for me on a road like this, it's just the steering feel is delicious. It's got a, a real weight to it. It's a precise tool in your hands. But for me, it's the, it's, I mean, the throttle response and the torque from that V6 turbo. It's just devastating. I mean, seriously, devastating. You, you come out of a corner, you know, like this one, down, down into second. I don't know this road, so I'm having to be as careful as I can be nice long gentle radius and then it's the punch out of the corners I think for me it's just, it's just a mega bit of kit this car mega bit of kit here we go and go It's just so poised. That wall's very helpful on the right hand side to reflect the noise back in. I mean you can you can cover some ground in this. What a rope. Seriously? Yeah. The locals do like driving on the wrong side of the road. I'm doing well here. I'm in a foreign country in a left-hand drive car. Yes, look at this road. <laughs> a little bit of rotation at the back there, not much, but certainly this is not a car to be a hero in on a road like this. But it, it is just, <laughs> oh my God. I now see why this centers this way. I mean, this road is just a delight. Tight, tight corner, nice big long straight opening up, oncoming white van, look. And then bury it. Yeah! <laughs> so, what are my final impressions of this car? Well, I tried to hide, hide my feelings really in this video. I'm unsure whether I like it or not. I mean, come on, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I think the, the roads we've driven it on today have spoiled me. They've been so beautiful and relatively open and not that much traffic. So it's been amazing to experience the car. I think GT mode is a brilliant default setting. I can imagine, you know, certainly on a longer trip, you'd be in that all the time. My favorite personally is sport mode with a softer damper setting. In the manual change, it just gets you this connection with the car that's very special. And then the ability to drop the roof and be at one with nature to really get close to such a beautiful landscape and scenery. That for me is what soft top motoring is all about. There's only one thing that would be better and that's to do this same drive at nighttime. Nighttime driving with the roof down is just something really special. Powertrain wise, 
tour de force, 620 horsepower, 730 newton meters. That that's enough for anybody. I mean, I I just can't tap into it on the public road. I'd love to get one of these on track. Oh my days! Because the whole setup of the car, the steering feels beautiful. I pushed on quite hard today, and the brakes have been stellar. They've got this. They take a little bit of warming up, but once they're ready, they've got this lovely progressive nature. And when you really hang on them, boy, does this car stop. I guess my only challenge for this car is that the people in the market, for because it's not a cheap car, let's face it, so it's banging right up against your, you know, Ferrari F8 or um, a Huracan Evo, something along those lines. And maybe, maybe those have more auditory pleasure, more auditory theatre, it lacks a little bit. It still sounds great for a turbo V6, but it's it's not a patch on a V10 Lamborghini or a V8 Ferrari. I'm not complaining, surely put an aftermarket exhaust on it, it would sound even better. But, but it's not just about raw exhaust tone, it's the intake noise, it's the wastegate whoops and chirps that you get, especially when you're really pushing on, it makes some fantastic, fantastic noises. Oh, look, some twisty roads. So I've still got a good hour's worth of driving to get back to the end of our test route today. And I'm gonna finish this video here so that I can concentrate on just enjoying myself because this car's mega, absolutely mega. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. Oh, oh my days. But yeah, I think it's safe to say the Maserati MC20 Cello could well be my new favorite supercar because I just think it looked beautiful and it goes like stink. Anyway, I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.